everyone and I welcome you all to today's talk about another medical topic so which is amyloid transthyretine that's what ATTR means actually it is a type of amyloidosis which is um, a rare disease whenever uh, there is a buildup of amyloid proteins in one some body and they tend to build up in the blood vessels, bones, and major organs, which leads to a wide range of complications. Okay, so we'll try to discuss the topic with following subheadings. We'll try to go through the medications, what about the patients, and all. So what it is, as I already discussed, that indeed it is something which is rare, and its effect on a patient can be devastating. Symptoms can include anything ranging from the fatigue, shortness of breath, numbness or tingling in the hands and feet, which may lead to even difficulty in walking. As the disease will progress, the patients may experience uh, failure of different organs, including the kidney, the heart, even other life-threatening complications as well. So... Um, being a rare disease, it can be difficult to diagnose due to its vague symptoms. Some common symptoms may include fatigue, weight loss, and swelling in the legs or ankles. And as the disease will progress, the patients may experience numbness or tingling in their hands and feet, which may even lead to further worsening of uh, walking uh, problem or even shortness of breath. These symptoms can greatly impact a patient's quality of life and ability to perform daily activities. So diagnosing ATTR, amyloidosis, can be a complex process due to its wide range of symptoms and uh, mimicking with the other diseases. However, early diagnosis is crucial for improving the patient outcomes and quality of life. So your physician may use a combination of tests including the blood and urine tests um, including imaging tests the mri ct scan or the biopsy of the affective tissues genetic testing may also be used to identify mutations associated with the disease it is important for patients to communicate any kind of symptoms they are experiencing to their healthcare provider in order to receive an accurate diagnosis Currently, there are several treatment options which is available for the ATTR amyloidosis. These options include medications that can slow the progression of the disease, improve the quality of life for patients. In addition to medications, other treatments such as liver transplantation, stem cell transplantation may be considered in certain cases. It is important for patients to work closely with their healthcare team to determine the best treatment plan. So there are several medications which are approved by the FDA for the treatment, which includes tofamidis, patisiran, and enotercin, uh, which we'll discuss in the coming slides. So tofamidis uh, is a medication that has been approved uh, since already several years ago, and it works by stabilizing the TTR protein, preventing it from forming amyloid fibrils okay and uh, in clinical trials it has been shown to slow the progression of neurological symptoms in patients with ATTR amyloidosis and it has been well tolerated and minimum side effects has been seen coming to the other medication uh, which is also uh, tends to act by targeting the production of abnormal amyloid protein in the liver this RNA interference therapy works by using small interfering RNAs to silence the genes that produces the abnormal protein, ultimately reducing its accumulation in tissue and organs. Enotericin is a medication which is used to treat the ATTR amyloidosis by targeting the production of protein responsible for the disease. It works by binding to the messenger RNA and preventing it from creating the amyloid protein. This helps to slow down the progression of the disease and improve the patient outcomes. 
While medications for the ATTR amyloidosis will help to manage symptoms and slow down the disease progression, but side effects of the above mentioned medications may include nausea, diarrhea, and fatigue. Additionally, inotercin has been associated with the risk of thrombocytopenia and glomerulonephritis. It is important to discuss uh, about the potential side effects of each medication whenever these medications are being considered to be initiated for any of the patients. And patient considerations for any of the therapy is very crucial. I would encourage everyone to discuss it with their physicians. And for patients in early stages, medications that slow or halt the progression of disease may be preferred. Although for someone in advanced stages, medications that provide symptom relief and improve the quality of life may be more appropriate. Another consideration is the patient's overall health and any other medical condition they may have. Some medications may also interact with other medications, so it is important not only to take care of the pharmacological management, but also other methods like personal preference, the lifestyle should also be taken into account. A lot of clinical trials has been done uh, to not only help develop the newer medications, but also to test the safety and effectiveness of the new therapies. In fact, if uh, the therapy proves safe and effective, they will be uh, approved by the regulatory agencies and made available to the patients. So the future for medical therapy for ATTR amyloidosis is promising. Several uh, medications are being uh, tested, which includes gene silencing, gene editing therapies as well. And these have been promising uh, to be uh, really showing good results, especially in the preclinical studies. And in addition to the new therapies, uh, there are also research which is ongoing to improve the existing uh, treatment as well. Uh, several combination therapies are also being explored, uh, which may be effective than single agents alone. Patient support is something very important, which can help someone while going through the challenging journey to have the right support in place. Patients may need emotional and practical support to help them navigate their diagnosis and treatment. And patient support can come in many forms, which may include like su support group, counseling, educational resources, or even um, the community support to help them cope with their symptoms and empower them is very important. Support group can be very valuable especially for such patients, to give the emotional support and practical advice. Because these groups are often led by trained facilitators and may include guest speakers, educational material, and social events. Patient advocacy plays a crucial role in raising awareness about ATTR amyloidosis and supporting patients who are living with the condition. Advocates work tirelessly to ensure that patients have access to resources they need to manage their symptoms and maintain their quality of life. Advocacy efforts include fundraising for research, lobbying for policy changes that benefit patients, and providing emotional support to those who are struggling. By working together, advocates can make a real difference in the lives of people affected by ATTR amyloidosis. There are plenty of research organizations in this field. So one such organization is Amyloidosis Research Consortium, which brings together researchers, clinicians, and patients to advance the understanding of the disease. Another organization is International Society of Amyloidosis, which promotes research, education, and awareness of amyloidosis worldwide. So just to give you a practical example, there was a patient uh, called as John, who was diagnosed with ATTR myeloidosis at the age of 50. 
They experience severe fatigue and weakness, making it difficult to perform everyday tasks. But after uh, starting treatment with Tafamidis, he noticed significant improvement in his energy levels and was able to resume his favorite hobbies. Similarly, another patient named Sarah, who was diagnosed with ATTI amyloidosis, in her early 40s, she struggled with her heart palpitation and shortness of breath, which was causing a lot of discomfort in her active lifestyle. After she was initiated on Patisiran, she regained her strength and was able to return to her family uh, activities and day-to-day -day activities without limitations. As we look towards the future, the clinical trials, the research organizations offer hope for developing new and improved treatments for ATTI amyloidosis. However, patient support and advocacy remain essential in raising awareness and providing resources for those affected with the disease. We urge everyone who is listening to this lecture to take action and join the fight against ATTI amyloidosis. Thank you so much for your kind attention. And uh, I would really encourage everyone to go through these references, uh, read from them, and if possible, to help anyone who needs to know about something important as this. Uh, feel free to share your questions. We'll be more than happy to answer if there's any need. And yes, uh, I don't have any financial disclosure related to this uh, 